so hello so in this video we are going to learn about the Morse method in precipitation titration so it aims to analyze the concentration of chlorine and bromine ions so chlorine and bromine ion is analyzed by this Morse method so let's go to the theory of this Morse method so in Morse method what happens that the Ag plus ion reacts with chlorine ion to form AgCl since Ag plus ions are taken in excess amount so after all the chlorine ions gets converted to AgCl then the excess Ag plus ion reacts with the indicator that is potassium chromate and from silver chromate and this silver chromate gives the red color which denotes our endpoint of the titration so the silver chromate precipitates and gives red color at a pH of 7 that is at neutral pH so what happened that Ag plus ions were more than the chlorine ions so even after forming AgCl the remaining amount of Ag plus reacted with the indicator that is potassium chromate and gave silver chromate which formed the red color precipitate so in this titration our solvent is water and the analyte that is the source of chlorine is from this sodium chloride solution and the titrant is silver nitrate solution that is AgNO3 and the indicator that we are using is potassium chromate so let's now understand the reactions that are involved in this Morse method of precipitation titration so these are the reactions involved in this precipitation titration so as you can see I have drawn the burette and the conical flask to make you understand the reaction in a much more easier way now let me just show you what are present inside this burette and the conical flask so the conical flask contains NaCl solution and few drops of the indicator that is potassium chromate and the burette contains AgNO3 solution which is denoted by this blue color so now when we open the burette a little bit then the AgNO3 comes in a dropwise manner and reacts with the NaCl present inside the conical flask so first the AgNO3 reacts with the NaCl and there occurs a double displacement reaction in which formation of AgCl and NaNO3 takes place as you can see in this reaction the first reaction where the NaCl reacts with the AgNO3 and forms AgCl and NaNO3 the AgCl forms precipitate and precipitates down in the conical flask so the AgCl forms the precipitate so now the AgNO3 solution present inside the burette keeps on falling inside the conical flask where it reacts with the NaCl to form this AgCl precipitate now after some time when all the NaCl gets exhausted in forming the AgCl precipitate then the last drop of the AgNO3 solution reacts with the indicator to form the silver chromate so here's the AgNO3 reacts with the potassium chromate to give this silver chromate which precipitates down and gives this brick red color that helps to determine the endpoint alongside it also forms the KNO3 now we have to analyze the concentration of chlorine present in our analyte so for that when we get the endpoint denoted by the brick red precipitate at that moment we have to stop the titration and measure the amount of AgNO3 required to obtain the endpoint so this reduced value of AgNO3 inside the burette denotes the amount of AgNO3 required to form equivalent amount of AgCl and from the amount of AgCl formed we can calculate the amount of chlorine present in the analyte Mohr's method has its own limitation so the first being that in acidic medium it cannot be operated so at a pH below than 7 what happens that the silver chromate which gives the endpoint of our titration get dissolves and the silver chromate if dissolves we cannot get a proper endpoint so that is a problem 
so the solution for that problem is that we have to add base so we have to add base like calcium carbonate or sodium bicarbonate to make the solution back to neutral pH so basic medium is also a problem so if our pH of the solution is greater than 7 then our titrant AgNO3 degrades to form AgOH which is a very big problem so there is solution for this problem so we have to add acid like acetic acid to make the solution back to neutral pH so there is a drawback of Morse method that it cannot analyze iodine it can analyze chlorine bromine but it cannot analyze iodine because when the analyte for iodine that is Ki reacts with AgNO3 then it forms KNO3 and AgI and this AgI absorbs the chromate ion and disturbs the indicator so the silver iodide absorbs the chromate ion and disturbing the indicator and that results in faulty endpoints so this was all about Moore's method of precipitation titration so I hope you like this video stay healthy bye